<laughs> Ankit is a QA with 11 years of experience. He's also been a BA before and also a cybersecurity engineer. Uh, even being in the cybersecurity control center for one of the major banks in Singapore. Outside of work, he's a big uh, foodie and loves a drink. So if you're looking for somebody to drink with at the end of today, it is Friday, you should find him. And also we have Benjamin who also began his career as a game developer, but is now working as a software developer with over 13 years of experience. He's very passionate about automation, always trying to find a way to be as lazy as possible. Even going so far as to automate a web scraper to find out when his latest manga series uh, published mm -hmm. on the internet instead of having to go to each website and look them up himself. Um, outside of work, he is also a big football fan and will be going to the Liverpool versus Crystal Palace game later tonight. So if you're also going, you can find him there. Thank you so much. Please give it up for both of them. Well, thank you, you guys. for the lovely introduction. Good morning, guys. I hope you are doing enjoying it. Myself, Ankit, and Ben here. So, yep. Today we are going to talk about how to harness our end-to-end -end automation to gatekeep the data pipeline. Uh, may I request in the audience to please raise your hands if you have heard about data pipeline or worked in the past on data pipelines? Oh, nice. Good to see this. I see a couple of hands. Any QAs in the house? Ah, uh, okay. It's going to be exciting then. Yep. Let's begin then. Hi. Uh, let me give a quick introduction of what is pipeline. So pipeline can be referred as a uh, transferring an item from the start to the end. Similarly, a uh, data pipeline is moving data from different data source to the consumption layer. From the consumption layer, this data can be used for things like deriving insights, create visualization, or machine learning. Let's go one step further. In data pipeline, there will be three stages. The collect stage, where it's act as an entry point for the data. Process stage, where it does the data validation and transformation. And this data will be stored in the final layer for consumption. So this means that this sequencing of stages can also refer as a orchestration. Therefore, data pipeline can be referred as an orchestrated sequencing of stages. Next, let's look at a data pipeline as an example from the point of architecture point of view. So in data pipeline, there could be two primary layers, orchestrator and processor. So, and uh, orchestrator can help to break down the data pipeline into granular tasks from the three stages that I mentioned earlier. So let's I give an example. So for the collect stage, it can break down into two tasks. One is the read data set info or data source info where it trying to uh, retrieve information such as where is the file or data located, where is the founding and what is the maybe founding pattern that we'll use to locate the file. And this information will go to the, pass it to the next stage where or next task where it, the collect input data will use this information to collect the data. Next is the process stage, also can be break down into two tasks. One is the clean data. Clean data is to validate or remove unexpected data by calling the data processor. Data processor in the processor layer is more meant for uh, processing large volume of data. Once the data has been validated or unwanted data has been removed from the data set, it will pass this information uh, data to the next stage where, or next task where it, the process data will do things like data transformation. Then finally, this data it can be kept for consumption in the final layer. However, this consumption, uh, the final stage in the consumption can break down into two tasks which run in parallel. That means that I can run the store for consumption as well as email if error task. What I mean by email if error is that meaning that I could be have, I wanted, the team wanted to investigate why there's an unexpected data or rows inside the data set or inside the data itself. So, 
So in summary, orchestrator is helps to define or sequencing or tasks, doing scheduling or monitoring. All right, let's talk about the different types of data sources that we have. So we have something called as batch data sources and a streaming data sources. If you look at the diagram, when I talk about batch data source, this is something which can be scheduled on a daily, weekly, or a monthly basis. Let's say for an example of an employee data. Similarly, we have a stream data source, which is a live streaming of data. Let's say for an example, a sales lead, which keeps on coming. We, cannot, we can schedule it, but it has to be in a continuous way. We have these multiple pipelines, and we'd like to explain why do we have these multiple pipelines and what factors influence to have these two data sources pipelines separately. If you look at here, we have a feed type that is a full dump versus an incremental. We have data shapes that is fact or a dimensional data. We can have data in the format of CSV or a JSON, and there are multiple operations that can be performed on these types of data sources, which is a create, update, delete. All right, now let me tell you the testing challenges, and I hope you can, as you know, we have many QAs in the house, and you can feel the shoes here, what I felt about. Okay. If I look at the test scenarios that I had to put in, if you look at two data sources, we have different types of feed shapes, we have different types of file format, and this led to a number of use cases, which was, if, and it included our complex data types, we had anonymization use cases, schema evolution, et cetera, and this led when we started working, it led to a different multiple n number of use cases to be tested. The different major challenges that are faced while doing a manual regression, the first and foremost, as you can see, is the data preparation. Data preparation for these n number of use cases used to take minimum of two days. And it is one of the major place to be done because we have to mimic all the possible scenarios that we had. The second major challenge that we faced was the environment inconsistency. As we were working, we will find out there were multiple parameters in the pipeline configurations. There were parameters which were, lead, which were not given proper permissions and which led to our broken pipelines. And this led in delay in the testing. The third is the reliability. As we, being a human being, when we started testing, we, were, we are prone to errors because the verification was done manually. And also the schema conversion, which cannot be tested manually. In April 21, it took us five days to test five, 50 plus of test scenarios and 1,500 assertion points. This was the effort that we took. Can you imagine in October 21, when we had 100 plus of test scenarios and 3,000 plus of assertion points, how many days we would have taken? Any guesses? Sorry? <laughs> Anybody else? All right, I request you to hold this thought for a while. As you must know that manual regression becomes very exhausting. It takes, a, it went to cover 1,000 plus of assertion point, it takes a lot of time to test it. It is a time killer because it is time taken by the QA to do away from the story testing as well as to do other exploratory testing. And also it's a blocker to our continuous, impediment to our continuous delivery, which every organization is looking forward to. Okay, in your mind, you must be all thinking, right? So far, we have talked about all the manual regression, and you must be thinking, hey, how come didn't we have any automated tests for this manual regression? Yes, we do have automated tests, but it's on the unit test and the te uh, integration test layer. Unit test uh, is effective in testing small units of code, whereas for integration test, it's more effective in testing a component or a module by itself. But when it comes to integration testing for two or more components, or even the pipeline end-to-end -end itself, both the test layer for sure. Also, these unit tests and integration tests are usually run in the developer machine in local, which does not contain all of the components in an architecture. Like, for example, we do not have the orchestrator, the distributed file storage, or even the data processors that is deployed in the cloud services running local in the dev machine. Given this shortcoming of the unit test and integration testing, we, uh, depending on them, it's not sufficient enough, and it may lead to bugs, which we have experienced before. So in a data pipeline, how or what bug can cause? So let's imagine a scenario where a bad data has been discovered by the client or the stakeholder or the business, that they highlighted and the team investigate and 
uh, we notice that this bad data is caused by a release that is made in the production one month ago, and we have been ingesting using that release for the past one month, meaning we have one month worth of bad data. And bad data can be referred as the incorrect transform or represented value, or it does not conform to our expectation. And bad data can impact how the business make their decision. Meaning what if the bad data is something like the we accidentally or incorrectly transform the sales data. Let's say in, you, uh, from the start, maybe the sales data is maybe quantity of one. We accidentally transform it to 10. Then the business might thought that eh, this item is quite popular, item is in demanding. Then they may make decision based on this, which may not be accurate. So now we know that we have a bug in production and we need to fix this bug data, a uh, bug. How do we do that? So we need to, of course, uh, how do we rectify is uh, we find out the problem in the local environment first to replicate the issue. Then we fix it, deploy in the production again by testing it more regression before. And also that we need to do something called re-injection. Re-injection meaning that I need to clean up the data and ingest again. And so meaning I, for the one month worth of data, I need to clean up first before I can, re I need to re-ingest uh, again that one month worth of data. And re-ingestion will cause three types of wastage. First is the effort, because that the human intervention is needed to clean up the one month worth of data. And time wastage is because that, let's say the one month data requires three days to ingest complete. Then during this re-ingestion process, the latest or incoming data cannot be ingested until this re-ingestion has completed, meaning that the business or the stakeholder in, are not able to use the latest data until five days later, which might be critical for them because they need the data immediately to allow them to make their decision. And the cost, because that by doing the re-ingestion, we are using the computing resources that our solution is deployed in the cloud. And each time the CPU take up is, or resources take up the CPU, it costs additional money. And what if this re-injection keep happening because that our manual regression is not enough and this bug keep appearing in the release in the production for maybe every few iteration, it will definitely shake our, the stakeholder trust in us as even on the data itself. Because that they, even the data might be correct, they might be having fear that whether this data can be trusted or not. And this kind of trust being shaken is hard for us to reclaim that. Now we have thought about all the issue, uh, how much does a bug cost, the shortcoming for the integration and the unit test and the problem or challenges in the manual regression. We definitely need, so the team has decided to embark on the journey for having an end-to-end -end test automation on the data pipeline itself. Let me share with you, let us share with you what is our journey. So first, we need to identify what is our end-to-end -end test approach. So our end-to-end -end test approach actually is so different from what is being done on the web application that started for, for, with clean up, test, set up the test data, then run the test, then and verify that the result is correct. So once we identify our test approach, we need to do some preparation so that the end-to-end -end test can start to kick in. So first of all, we need to prepare the day one data. What I mean by day one data is that this data set or data source doesn't have ingest the data before. And once we set up the test data, we will manually run the pipeline so that it can ingest this data and it will have a day one ingested data set. Once this is done, we will move to day two. So we also need to prepare for day two data. So we started by preparing the day two test data set, then manually run the pipeline again. And once the pipeline has triggered and run complete, we have the day two ingested data set. 
However, we need to do one more additional step in this day two by doing the manual verification on this day two data because that we need to ensure that this data is correctly ingested and is conformed to our expectation. And this step needs to be done only once. And once we verify the day two data set, this whole day two data set or data will be kept under our expected output data, which we will be used in our end-to-end -end data. So let me walk you through the end-to-end -end test in the full cycle. So first, we will do the cleanup stage by cleaning the day two data. Once the day two data has been cleaned up, then the next is to set up the day two test data automatically by the auto, uh, E2E test by having the data set as well as set up the expected output so that it knows where is it located. Next, the automation will run the pipeline as part of the test and it will output as the ingested day two and we will compare the expected output day two set that we back up against the newly ingested data set to ensure there's no regression happens. So how do we run, how do we set up to run this uh, E2E automatically? We make use of the orchestrator by making it as our test runner. As you all know, uh, orchestrator can help to define or sequencing or task, which we find very suitable as our end-to-end -end test approach is also like a sequencing of tasks. So let's start with like from the king out stage. Before king out stage, we will read the test config so that we will know, the test will know like which data pipeline to run, what is the information, where is the king up to be done and etc. So once the information has been read, it will pass to the king up stage, which separate into three stage uh, tasks by doing the king out of the high files, input data or the output files. Once the clean up stage has done, it will move to the setup the day two data, run the test pipeline, wait for the test pipeline to complete. And at the end, we will do the verification of the day two data, having verified high files, verified output files, or even the schema in the output files. All right, let's talk about the key features that this framework introduced. So number one is debug friendly. It is lean, fast, and mean. It is data-driven and extendable. It is deeply assertive, and it can be utilized maximum time. Let us look at these features one by one. So when I say it's debug friendly, we are able to basically debug the test failures because of we are able to get all the ingestion states and the logs. We are able to assert the logs because the messages that are being printed on the assertion logs are very user friendly and concise. So the user is able to know where the failure is and he, can, he or she can debug it properly. The second is the lean, fast, and mean. As you saw that we had done our day one ingestion before running the day two ingestion, it reduced our execution time to half. And we were able to run and verify the day two ingestion very quickly because the platform has set all the tables, all the columns, everything was set. So it was just a run that had need to happen on top of it. Also, we were able to model our test scenarios, which we saw in a manual regression where we had number of test cases. Those test cases were able to, use cases were able to match to these pipelines in terms of different multiple pipelines, different data sets, number of scenarios to it. So we had major pipelines, below that we had number of data sets, and then we had a number of scenarios to run across these. It's data driven and extendable. We were able to add data in terms of records, data sets and pipeline. We were able to get our expected results from the actual execution. So the day one and day two ingestion that we did, we were able to see the actual results. We were also able to capture these data in terms of pipeline configuration. So everything was data driven. It's deeply assertive. As you saw, we were able to see assertions in terms of three layers. That is first is the data verification. We were able to assert it on the schema, and we were also able to assert this hive layer verification. The end product, where the consumption was there, were all of the parquet files, and we were able to run across all these layers. And yes, the most important is maximization of reuse of this one. We were able to use our built-in features which Orchestrator comes with, that is the sequencing of tasks, scheduling, as well as the monitoring. 
We were also able to utilize their view, UI to view our test run progress, how the test is running, whether it has failed or not. And most importantly, we were able to control, even after scheduling it, we were able to control on demand. When and wherever we wanted to run, we were able to use it. And yes, the code which was written, we were able to reuse it, so we did not have to write a separate code base for this one. All right, we come back to this slide. Now with this automated regression, do you think how much time we would have taken for this? Any guesses, guys? Sorry? <laughs> One day? One week? Ah, OK, 20, no. Uh, anybody else? All right, uh, let's look at. So it took two hours. So we reduce our effort just merely for two hours. And, in, and when we were going for our continuous delivery processes, <laughs> this pipeline made us very confident before releasing anything to our production. In terms of highlights, as we were a group of developers, QAs, and business taking care of it, for developers, it was very easy to apply those changes and check whether the code that has been checked in is correct or not. They, it used to give them early feedback if there are failures which is disturbing it. As a QA, we got more time to do our story testing and our other testing rather than spending time in debugging the failures. And also, yes, for the business, it gave them a faster time to get features or fixes in production. Since this has went live, we were able to run it every day. We have completed 200 plus of end-to-end -end regression cycles. We have spotted around four regression bugs in the couple of sprint, first couple of sprints. We had done our 10 plus prod deployments with zero manual regression effort. And also it opened our doors to continuous delivery. So it has been a game changer for us. Yep, uh, thank you guys <laughs> and that's what it, I would say. I would like to open the forum for Q and A's. Any questions, any queries? Yeah. I'm sure this is lunchtime and you guys might be hungry, but. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I take this silence as a no. And so, <laughs> thank you guys for having us here. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Oh. oh, sorry. Yeah. Can I have the microphone? Oh. Okay. Uh, sorry, I'll just go first, and then I'll pass the mic to you. Sure. So the, uh, there were two questions. So for the solution that took um, two hours for the regression to run, how long did it take to build it? And then the second question is, <laughs> what, <laughs> what, what is the incremental cost? Because there is maintenance involved. There are going to be additional test scenarios. What's the additional cost that you are seeing to enhance the solution? Sure. Thank you for your question. Mm -hmm. You want yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. So it took, as we were starting from scratch, it took us around 30 days to complete the framework. Uh, in terms, and as we had been long in the project, we had to cover a lot of scenarios. So it took around like 30 odd days to complete and make the framework base. Um, in terms of extendability, it is, as I said, it's a data driven. So as soon as a new feature used to get committed or get introduced, we just had to d add data to it. The pipeline will take care of all the use cases. And as I said, the code is reusable. We are not writing a separate code for it. So the same code will be used for running these pipelines. So yeah, I hope this answers. Thanks. Thank you. May I have you? Uh, okay. <laughs> How much time would it take to you know actually develop this thing and whether yeah. uh, my, my follow-up question is that whether we can uh, have it as a product actually if we have some similar requirement maybe in ThoughtWorks or some other. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah, I think when you is here, I think sure <laughs> we would definitely like to do it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. All right, uh, thank you for this evening and for this uh, having us here. Yep, thank you guys. Thank you.